Good morning. We do give a very warm welcome to those that are joining us <coughs> in the hall and those that are also joining online. We will just open now with a word of prayer together, shall we just open in prayer. Father, we ever thank thee and bless thee that we can just spend a little time now in opening thy word, the Bible. We thank thee for the importance of thy word. We thank thee that we have the whole scripture and that we can look into it and we can learn concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank thee for this. And we thank thee, O our Father, that thou hast declared that thou wouldst bless thy precious word. We thank thee, Father, for a wonderful saviour. We thank thee for one who cares, one who demonstrated that great love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we do just pray, Father, even now, that there would be that real quietness and that real calmness, and that indeed the Holy Spirit would just even now work in the lives of men, women, women and boys and girls, convicting them of their need for the Saviour. <coughs> oh, Father, only a work of thyself will do. So, Father, now we do just pray for thy help and thy wisdom as we seek to proclaim him and him alone as a Saviour of sinners. We give thee the utmost thanks and praise now in his precious and worthy name. Amen. If you have a Bible, please, could we turn to the book of Matthew? Don't worry if you don't, I will try and read carefully. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And we'll start reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1. And he, this is the Lord Jesus, entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven, or to say, Arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marvelled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician. But they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come 
to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word to us. So we have two scenes here. We have two, two scenes here. Firstly, we have a man. And there are other verses of scripture that we could have read about this scene. A man who was brought by his friends. And he was brought to where the Lord Jesus Christ was. other parts of scripture we have seen where the Lord Jesus he has healed the leper he has healed the blind man to be able to see and now we see a one who couldn't walk that could now walk because of the Lord Jesus Christ but there's some things on these verses that I want us to just take a little bit more of a closer look at this morning Firstly, in verse 2, when the man is brought lying on his bed because he couldn't walk, the Lord Jesus, it says in verse 2, and Jesus seeing their faith. Their faith. Why is that important? Well, it's important, dear friend, because the Lord Jesus Christ saw that they believed that the Lord Jesus was the one who could help their friend. They had faith that who they brought him to, he could help him. And the Lord Jesus notices their faith. Dear friend, for us to be made right with God, we have to have faith, not in ourselves, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. And through faith in him, through trust and acceptance in what he has done, we can be saved and we can know salvation. We can be rescued from our sin. Jesus saw their faith, firstly. But look at what happens first. The Lord Jesus Christ, what does he say to the man? What does he say to the man? Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. The Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't just help the man with his physical ailment. The man was saved. Thy sins be forgiven me. <coughs> oh, the Lord Jesus Christ hasn't come in this world for any other reason but to seek and to save that which is lost. That which was lost. But what do we see of the people? What do they say? The scribes. And let's read that together. Verse 3. And behold certain of the scribes said within themselves. Do we get that? They didn't say it openly. They said it within. They were murmuring within. God knows everything that we think. Everything that we say, he knows all about us. And he knew their thoughts. And their thoughts were, this man blasphemeth. He blasphemeth. They were not prepared to accept that he indeed is the son of God. And dear friend, he is. He is the son of God. He was truly man, but truly God. But what does verse 4 tell us? Verse 4 tells us this. Jesus knowing their thoughts. See, he knows all about us. 
He knows all about us in this room. He knows all about us that are online, wherever we are watching this this morning. He knows everything about you. He knows everything that maybe nobody else knows about. But more importantly than that, the Lord Jesus Christ knows all that are his. He knows all that are his. He knows all that have come to him. He knows all that have trusted in him. He knows all that have accepted him as their saviour and lord. He knew their hearts. And what does he say about them? Wherefore ye think evil in your hearts. And then he goes on to show them. Is it easier, verse 5, to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk? And why was this? What was he trying to show them? What was he trying to show them? Well, he was trying to show them in verse 6. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And he showed it through the man being able to walk. The man arose and he walked and he went to his own home. Verse 8 tells us, The multitude saw it and they marvelled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Do you know something, dear friend? The Lord Jesus Christ, he came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. These people here, they were very quick and very easy to pick up on things that the Lord Jesus Christ did. But they weren't willing to accept who he is. He is the Son of God. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is equal with God. And he came into this world to save. Why? Because he never did anything wrong. The Lord Jesus Christ was perfect in every way. You know something? When we judge things... And we look at things. <clears throat> we judge them by our own thoughts and our own ideas. What we perceive or what we accept to be okay. Do we understand what I'm saying there? When in life, when we look at situations, we look at them and we look at them how we deal with situations and we see things differently because some of us we look at it and think well that doesn't really matter that's okay other people look at a situation and like, well I don't agree with that and then other people look at it and they think well that should be dealt with in this way we all have different merits to how things should be <coughs> but what we don't realise dear friend and what we need to realise and accept is when it comes to sin, when it comes to the wrong that we do, it doesn't matter what we look at it and see it as. It's how God looks upon it. And God looks upon sin and he sees the sin that we do. And God, because he is just, and holy and righteous he can have nothing to do with sin do we understand that god isn't looking at things as we do that is why i've said this verse a number of times in the past man looketh on the outward appearance but the lord looketh on the heart god looks at us differently to how we look at ourselves and god looks at each and every one of us and we have sin. We're all the same. You might say, well, we're not all the same. We're all different. We have different eye colours. We have different skin colour. We're all different ages. We're from different areas. We have different nationalities. 
But when it comes to God and when it comes to his law and when it comes to sin, we are all the same. And the Bible tells us this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as God looks upon you and God looks upon me, he sees a sinner. A sinner who cannot save themselves. A sinner who needs a saviour. <coughs> because God... <coughs> Excuse me. God wants none to perish. God wants none to face his punishment. God loves you and God loves me. But God can have nothing to do with sin. It goes on, doesn't it? Jesus passed forth from thence and saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and saith unto him, Follow me. Follow me. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said to him. He had a choice, didn't he? Matthew here has a choice. He can say, I'm not following you. Or he can follow. And what do we read he does? Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. He followed him. He followed the Saviour. And as it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eat of your master with publicans and sinners? Why is the Lord Jesus eating with these people? They were judging them. They were looking upon them and they were judging them. And they said, why is Jesus eating and spending time with sinners? Verse 12. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Because these Pharisees, oh, they were all for doing this, that and the other. Because what does the Lord Jesus Christ go on to say? For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Oh dear friend, they looked upon themselves, the Pharisees, and they thought they were righteous. They thought that they had it all right. And they were looking on others, and they were saying these are publicans and sinners. Why is Jesus with them? And the Lord Jesus told them clearly. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Oh dear friend, we may look at ourselves and we may think we've got it all right. We may think, well, we can do it our way. We can come to God our way. <clears throat> we can do things our way. No. No. No, we can't. No, we can't. We can't come our way. We can't do it ourselves. Look at the ones here. What does the Lord Jesus say to them? I haven't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. <clears throat> we have to realise our need. We have to accept our need before God. And each and every one of us have sinned. And each and every one of us needs a saviour. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that saviour. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to save you. 
He loves you. He died for you. He wants to be your saviour. He can be. But you have to come to him. What did Matthew do? What did Matthew do in these verses? Jesus calls him and says to him, follow me. What does he do? He arose and followed him. What does the Lord Jesus say to this man who was sick of the palsy? Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Oh, that was the important part. Before he was walking, that his sins were forgiven. Oh, dear friend, your sins can be forgiven now. You can know the Lord Jesus as your saviour. But will you accept him? Will you follow him? Oh, the Pharisees, they were just looking and murmuring and saying, what is he doing? And then further on, he's eating with sinners and publicans. But they did not realise their need before God. They did not realise their sin before God. Before we can be saved, dear friends, we have to realise our need. We have to realise our need before a holy and righteous God. Do we accept and do we realise our need before him? In his eyes, we are sinful. In his eyes, we are lost. In his eyes, we are separated from God. But in his love and mercy for you and me, he provided himself on Calvary's cross so that we can be made right with God. That we can be made righteous in God's sight. We're not righteous in God's sight because of our sin. But because of what he has done, we have been made right with him when we trust on him. And we can be saved. Oh, that is wonderful. It's a wonderful message. That is why we proclaim it week after week. That is why we come here each Sunday morning and preach concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is so vital. It is so vital that we come to know him. Because without him, we're in so much need. Without him, we have no hope. We have no assurance. We have no salvation. But if we come to him, we will know him as our saviour and as our Lord. Our sins can be forgiven. And we can rejoice in knowing him. But will you be like this man struck with the palsy? He went away whole. Will you be like Matthew when Matthew was asked by the Lord Jesus Christ to follow him? What does he do? He follows. Or will you be like the Pharisees? And they were so much took up with all the things of other things. They were not prepared to truly accept and truly see who was before them. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not willing to accept him. They were not willing to turn to him. They were not willing to turn away from their sin. They didn't even realise that they were sinners in God's sight. Or they didn't want to accept it. They looked at others and said, these are sinners. But when they looked at themselves, they thought they were righteous. They thought they had it all right. 
And we can be like that, dear friend. We can think we've got everything planned, everything sorted, everything how we want it, and be well away from God. Oh, dear friend, I'm not finished with this. What does he say to the people? What does he say to the Pharisees? Go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And dear friend, today, now, if you repent and turn from your sin, he will accept you. He will accept you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank thee once again for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee, O our Father, for that great sacrifice made. We thank thee, Father, that the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life on Calvary's cross. He indeed, Father, there made that perfect gift, that perfect sacrifice, that perfect offering of himself. And O oh, our Father, we thank thee and bless thee that he could save a truth. That he did not come into this world to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And oh Father, we ever thank thee and bless thee for all those who come to him. Who repent and turn from their sin. He will in no wise cast out. He will in no wise turn away. So Father, we pray for precious souls. We pray for those who maybe don't see the need to pray for themselves. And oh Father, we pray even now that if there are any that are not yet saved, that they haven't had that time in their lives when they've turned away from their sin and simply turned and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that even now, even this second, would be the day that their eyes would be opened to who he is and accept him for themselves. So, Father, we give thee the utmost thanks and praise now in his precious and worthy name. Amen.